Now we have less than four weeks to go until spring. Yes! <laughs> so we can see the light at the end of the cold, wet tunnel, but how many of us are suffering from those winter blues? Here was some advice to get us to the end of the season. We can see it just over there. Psychologist Sarah Chatwin, good morning to you. Oh, the sooner the better, huh? I reckon. Let's talk about it. What is seasonal affective disorder? It is the winter blues, but people generally notice a little bit of an upsurge in those depressive symptoms around about autumn and petering out in spring. Yeah, because it's just we, we don't like the colds, we hibernate a little bit. We don't, do we? So who gets affected by sad? Can I call it sad or yeah, SAD? Yeah, well it's nice isn't it that it's sad and it yeah. means you're a bit bluesy, it kind of works well. Anybody can. I think for people who are predisposed to depression, depressive characteristics, they are probably going to have heightened feelings around those winter months, but anybody really, so we're all a bit you know, prone to it. I know that in uh, Scandinavia, where I actually live for a year, they uh, have a real problem because it is dark. No light. For yeah. so long. Absolutely. No sun, no light, no vitamin D. They really do suffer. And it's a big issue for the Scandinavian countries. They have little light boxes yeah. in their houses. Yeah. And yeah, it's a really, really, n you know, neat way that they deal with it. So how can I tell that somebody might be suffering from this? I think if you hear people complaining about lacking motivation, if their appetite has changed, if their sleep patterns have changed, if a person who is generally, you know, a really nice, light, bubbly person becomes quite withdrawn. So I guess if there are, you know, distinct behavioural changes, people may be suffering from SAD. So it is an actual, an actual disorder. It is. We all feel a bit down in winter, don't we? Like a little bit, well it's not, summer is definitely the, the season that we feel great in. It, it's interesting, isn't it? Because um, the weather is such a conversation starter and we, it seems that sport and weather in this country are really important to us. So people go, oh, you know, we all get a bit bluesy over winter, but some people yeah. more so than others. So I know what to look, what, look for in my friends. I mean, what should I be looking for in myself? Any, any triggers? It's often harder to self-diagnose, yeah. isn't it? It's, it's nice when a person says, oh, you've been presenting like this or are you okay because it alerts us to changes within ourselves but I think again if your appetite changes if you feel that you're grumpy if you feel that you're less um, productive in the workplace oh uh, yes ask Mike um, <laughs> you may be suffering from seasonal affective disorder and does it go on or does it suddenly stop or will it continue research suggests that it's you know it kind of starts around autumn and peters out but you know if you are having depression it's hard to know when it begins and when it when it ends. I think it heightens in those yeah. winter months. So what should we do then if we think we know somebody who is actually suffering from this, this disorder? Oh look I'm all about the conversation. I think open the conversation up and just show them that you are concerned and that you care. I would say that there's something to do with timing and tone. If they're stressed out and busy after work, don't go there. Yeah. Uh, if they're feeling judged, if they're feeling uh, targeted or attacked, they will shut the conversation down. So just be careful how you present. But I think if people know you care, it's great to talk about things, you know, problem shared, problem halved. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And what are your top tips for dealing with it? Well, if you know that the winter months are going to be really blah blah for you, plan a trip. If you can save your pennies and get yourself sorted, go away. Have a little bit of a break. If you can't do that, spend time um, in social activities with people who are positive and supportive. So get rid of toxic relationships. We tend to avoid social interaction during these months, but it's actually what we need because it's a bit stimulating. Yeah. So make sure it's positive social contact. They would be my top two. Escape to somewhere warm, get some vitamin D, or you know, plan things that make your soul sing. Yeah. So get outside too and, and enjoy on those beautiful crisp sunny days that we get to actually get outside and Absolutely, do Absolutely, because we do have some days like that, so make the most of them. Yeah, breaks, lunch times, get out there. And is it something that if you do have uh, like the symptoms of it, you will just, by the time it gets warmer, you will automatically stop with those symptoms? Or? There, there can certainly be a reprieve, but for some people who, you know, go a bit down with it, mm. you know, they might need some medication, they might present to their GP with these symptoms, and research suggests that talking about it, counselling, psychological intervention can be really helpful too. So they might need a little bit more. What about exercise? Does that help? Exercise is great. If you are the type of person that feels good about exercising and it's been part of your life, 
ramp it up a bit, give it a bit of a push. But I mean, I don't want to suggest that for people who find exercise really difficult. You yeah. don't want to give yourself more hurdles to leap in those winter but months. But someone did say to me, uh, anyone can get outside, just put a jacket on, go for a walk. If Absolutely. you get a bit wet, you get a bit wet, you come home and have a nice warm shower. Look, we're, lu we're lucky we have beaches, we have bushwalks. We are so fortunate. Just count your blessings and... Uh, this too shall pass. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Great <laughs> advice, as always. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Always thank a pleasure. You.